of the Arts. This group of accomplished seniors is incredibly special, talented, and versatile. They have lived through multiple historical moments and it is evident in their work. During these unprecedented times, people have looked to the arts for solace. Lives have undoubtedly been changed these past few months and many are looking for ways to connect to others through the arts, to say things that may not be possible otherwise. Tonight, you will hear an original song composed in the past two weeks. You will see artwork as a direct reaction to current events from this year. Artists have a special responsibility at times like these when everyone is trying to make sense of the world. Artists are able to tell stories of the moment with music or visuals that will be reflected on for centuries. Art has the power to push communities to engage thoughtfully and take steps forward. In a recent opinion piece entitled, What Does Art Have to Do with the Coronavirus? Artist Judy Chicago stated, when art is meaningful and substantive, viewers can become enlightened, inspired, and empowered. This can lead to change, which we urgently need. This group of students has demonstrated that they have unique voices and are dedicated to their craft. Visual art students investigated topics this year of identity, oppression, action, and memory. They use their skills to make meaning out of experiences and express their vast knowledge. The musicians performing tonight also pondered similar concepts. Their work strives to create community and affect change, not an easy task. Every artist here can speak about their work as a commitment and a challenge, something that needs to be a part of everyone's lives in order to reflect, to be present, and to be whole. While this year's program looks a little different being viewed virtually, the time to practice, create, and perform from somewhere deep inside is the same. The musical performances you will see are a combination of pre-recorded and live. In between these, you will hear from AP Art students sharing their sustained investigation inquiries. Both of these endeavors show authenticity and mastery. Join me in honoring these powerful musicians and artists in this year's baccalaureate. Hi, I'm Cassidy Mullen. This year, I investigated the questions, what is it like to be a triplet and how do you find your individuality as a triplet? I have a very close relationship with my triplets. My concentration is centered around both self-identity and the way my triplets and I have grown into three different people. I first investigated with acrylic paint, painting our faces on glass. I thought about the ways the colors could portray our different personalities. I also continued experimenting with reoccurring color themes, dark blue and red for Max, pink and light blue for me, and green and purple for Haley, using touches of selected co universal colors to demonstrate the traits we share. Next, I went in a different direction and decided to experiment with the ways text can be implemented into art. I transferred a note from my mom depicting my two-year-old self. Our lack of facial features in the first sustained investigation shows that we had not yet established our own identities, and the letter shows the way my mom saw us as unique individuals. I then considered how my siblings' writing and my own writing could show our growth as individuals. In my three next three pieces, our facial features begin to appear, leading up to the final overlapping portraits of our faces.
I address my guiding question, what makes a location important to someone, and how can you convey that through art? Through a series of portraits of my family members in places that are important to them. Importance was defined pretty broadly, um, as it could be beyond the physical place. And conveying importance was through scale, uh, mood, subject expression, pose and attire, along with background. Uh, evidence of practices in my journal where I worked on hair, nose, mouths, and uh, ears, based on techniques that I learned um, on the internet and in art class. Further practice was evident in my increasingly detailed backgrounds, where I measured for scale and focused on lines, which added depth to my works. This practice better connected the people to the locations. Evidence of experimentation in my work is in the variety of different poses, settings, and subjects. Uh, for example, I included uh, animals in one of my pieces. Uh, I also had to experiment with backgrounds that were blurred or undefined. Experimentation was also important to my investigation because I, I, because I learned that location importance goes beyond the physical place and that I needed to really capture those places. The storms are raging on the rolling sea And on the highway of breath The winds of change are blowing wild and free Hi, my name is Annabelle Maldonado. I'm a Bronxville senior and I took AP Art this year. So in the past couple years, I experimented with a wide range of mediums and I also did 
different things such as still lifes and self portraits and so on. But this year I realized that I loved mixed media and I love social commentary pieces. So I combined these two and my concentration was exposing and confronting the cover-ups in America. So I felt that our country lacks the ability to find solutions and confront uh, ongoing problems that we often don't really talk about. So I investigated certain problems by looking through newspapers or looking through different statistics. So one of my pieces was talking about school shootings in America and how it's a problem that could be confronted in a better way. So I went to my second grade classroom and I collected a variety of different arts and crafts. And over that, I researched schools that had uh, deaths of over five people and I collaged that on top. Another piece I did was talking about how certain social norms tend to cover up people's identities. So I commented on the saying, boys don't cry or act like a lady or how certain times uh, children are brought up based off of their gender rather than like who they actually are. If it's a girl being brought up as a princess or a boy being introduced to football at a very early age. Uh, another piece I did was talking about American substance abuse in teenagers. I went around our town collecting different substances and collaged it into a body uh, and talking about how we cover up certain parts of our body within a substance and how we rely on that. And the list goes on, whether it was plastic pollution or uh, social media's influence on certain topics. But I really enjoyed this year and Thank you.
For my concentration, I focused on clouds. I think I'm drawn to clouds because they represent the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is most awake at night when we're dreaming. To me, dreams are juxtaposed images of what makes up a story. Storytelling is something I want to do for the rest of my life. Hopefully I can become a filmmaker. When beginning this concentration, I asked myself, how can I show emotion through clouds? After experimenting with colors to express moods, I moved to the question, how can I use clouds to project what people want to see? I conveyed this message through my piece, Pink Skies, where I created clouds in which many soft figures of love and compassion. I then moved to walls with the purpose of creating a welcoming space for the mental health offices at my school. By implementing pieces on a wall, I'm experimenting with moods once again, but this time moods that infect an entire space. I'm also working with line drawings of clouds, which give a light and playful look. All still attempting to answer the question of the wants of the unconscious mind as seen through clouds. Ready. Ready. Yeah.
I'm Molly Denning, and I'm going to be talking about my AP art concentration. People say the eyes are the window to your soul, and I feel like this is true, but there are other parts of the body that are underrated and are equal tellers of person. Through my investigation, I challenged myself to answer the question, how can a person's story be told through their hands? I zoomed in on hands because they play a large role in body language and external factors. Through positioning, composition, and other details, you can learn a whole person's story just by a quick glance at their hands. To further push this, I use colors to symbolize what I feel the what I feel the hands are displaying emotionally, socially, or relationship-wise. Through my concentration, I evolved by including more complex details or background perspectives, and I also learned to use different materials evolving from just color pencil to testing watercolor crayon and digital through Procreate. I also went back into some of my old pieces and either revised them by adding more detail or redid them in a different material. After creating my 10 pieces, I feel that I have expressed how our hands can show a person's story through either religion, relationships with others, their emotions, or where they fit in in society. Thank you. to go I'm standing here outside your door hate to wake you up to say goodbye but the dawn is breaking it's early morning taxi's waiting it's blowing his horn already I'm so lonesome I could die So this year I focused my concentration on the bittersweet and nostalgic emotions that memories can hold. 
Um, I, I mainly guided my concentration with inspiration from my childhood, uh, working with old photographs of my siblings and I to guide my pieces, um, as well as questions surrounding the value of these memories, and as well as the importance of the people within them and kind of like the role that they play in my life today. Um, so through some trial and error, um, I tried some new techniques and materials. For example, uh, after a couple months of not working on, on certain paintings, I would kind of go back and try to rework them into something new. For example, um, I tried this with my mangoes piece, which I, after a couple months of not really working on it, I went back and unstretched the canvas from its wooden frame, and then I glued some pieces of molded chicken wire onto the painting to kind of give off the effect, um, the 3D effect of flowing water. Um, so in, in addition to trying some new materials, I also tried to connect my pieces through the use of symbolic elements. So um, as a continuation of my previous piece, Wonder, which was a portrait of my five-year-old self on my birthday, um, I created my birthday balloon piece, which I created through um, inspiration from both my 10th birthday and my 5th birthday. Um, my 10th, I had a flyer um, of a hot air balloon. Um, and so in the painting, I took the inspiration of the hot air balloon uh, for my 10th birthday, and then for the basket of the hot air balloon, I made it look like the jewelry box that, I, that my dad had given me for my 5th birthday. Um, so I kind of combined those two memories and tried to create one painting out of it. Um, so I tried to kind of connect them through like objects that had like sentimental value rather than photos.
For my sustained investigation, the question I came up with was how can I represent past memories through artwork? I was able to answer this question by creating artwork inspired by objects and places, places I've been visiting since I was very young, and objects that have stuck with me throughout my whole life so far. Throughout the process, I was able to experiment with new ways of creating art, like learning how to use the program Procreate on my iPad, which is how I learned how to create all the digital drawings I made. In the end, I'm very happy with the outcome of my final pieces and I've learned a lot from creating them. You can't. 
Hi everyone, um, I'm Elisa. I'll talk a little bit about my art. Um, so since I'm not in AP, I'm in Studio Art 4, I didn't really have to stick to this set concentration, so I kind of took this year as an opportunity to explore some mediums I never had the chance to work with before, and I really ended up liking oil paints, and so I just kind of went with that. Um, my first piece that I did this year and actually the first piece I ever did with oil is this um, tri-panel piece of these weird little figurines and it's kind of hard to explain where I got the idea because I just kind of started doodling these weird figures in class one day and then I thought it would be really cool if I turned them into paintings um, and I would say this kind of shaped what I did for the rest of the year and that I kind of continued with this cartoonish style um, for instance, my next piece kind of stems from my first one, um, and it's actually my favorite piece. It's called Smogglebork. Um, it's just a really long panel of these weird, funny-looking figures, um, and it's a really fun piece. Um, I really like it. And then I also kind of swayed from um, doing these figure things, and I did some other things, like I did um, a toy plane, and I also did... Um, a city scene um, of Rose Kitchen in New York, and that was really tough. It's a huge uh, painting, um, but I definitely learned a lot from it, and I definitely learned um, a lot this year. So thank you for listening. Hi everyone, my name is Emma Gear, and this year in AP Studio Art, I was investigating how portraits convey emotions or feelings. Throughout my concentration, I'm experimenting with styles and techniques to represent that emotions come in many forms and are not necessarily finite. Also, I am investigating the duality of emotion found between what is often perceived as yellow representing happiness and blue representing sadness. Together, they possess stereotypes of what feelings could be through a visual platform. I am trying to personify the fact that emotions are often not distinguishable or individually based and everyone feels things differently. More specifically, you can see this through my graphite pieces that are more interpretive and can adhere to numerous emotions that one could go through. Through the use of graphite and paint, I use blue, yellow, black, and white to convey various emotions through portraiture and the abstract visualization of how people can portray how they feel.
and I'm a senior at Bronxville High School and this year um, in AP Art I created a concentration entitled Dear Pressa and through it I investigated how the consequences of female oppression have manifested in society and have led to women's empowerment through portraits of both women and men. My concentration morphed from simply looking at how women have been oppressed through multiple channels in society to how women have used that oppression to come together to put the injustices behind them, um, as demonstrated in my final piece. I experimented with choosing various different mediums and color schemes to enhance the meaning of each piece. Um, for example, I used watercolor to represent both impermanence because of its fluidity and enduring strength because of the stain that paint creates. I also used a digital medium to equ equate a specific channel of oppression with its involvement in social media. And for many of the pieces, I played around with repetition and found myself repeatedly going back to add another layer and exaggerate the meaning. My concentration reflects ideas of female strength and autonomy while engaging with social norms and expectations to represent female defiance of, in the face of oppression. And I had a really um, love-hate relationship with this concentration because at one moment I didn't really see where it was going and how it was representing the struggles that women have faced. Um, but then finally at the end it really came together and I, I, I really enjoyed creating this and being an AP Art this year. I also created another concentration with a photographic medium and this project entitled Human Action displays a series of photos designed to be noticed, foster dialogue, and prompt activism. I've observed how many advertisements and other media that portray disturbing and shocking reflections of the consequences of human action cause people to shy away from the message trying to be conveyed. I think it's just way easier to ignore difficult subjects. So, my idea was to attempt to reach a broader audience by developing a critical portfolio of detrimental habits in a more visually appealing way. In addition to my statement against debilitating human habits that have led to and are furthering our environment's destruction, I also wanted to display my passion for editorial photography. I feel that I can say more with a photo by being involved in the entire creative process, such as makeup, styling, location scouting, and figuring out the props. Throughout my body of work, I begin with the American Dream, an idea that allowed many people to abuse the environment in pursuit of a better life economically. And then I go to demonstrate the consequences we human beings face and finalize it with the com comfort society feels in their own mistakes. I played a lot with this concentration and, and used a lot of different um, 
characters, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Hi, I'm Theo Liao, and today I'm going to sing a song I wrote in response to the murder of George Floyd. However, his death was not an isolated instance of violent anti-black racism. Just this year, we have already seen the brutal killings of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and Tony McDade, amongst many others. This is not new. Racial violence and injustice against black people is systemic and has been ingrained into our society for the past 400 years. It may seem impossible for one person to make a difference to such an extensive and entrenched problem, but one by one, we can help chip away at its structure and incite change. I have always stood for equality, justice, peace, and above all else, love in my music, and I believe that when we come together for common cause, we can change the world. I encourage you all to fight against racism, whether it be by donating, protesting, educating, signing petitions, or engaging in tough conversations, which many of you have been doing. Remember, your voices can and will make a difference. Far away in a distant town, a family mourns another. Because they know that there are others the People rise up in the streets They say we heard your story We'll stand by you and make it known That hungry hearts and heavy fists Are coming like a hurricane In a town that's never seen change Stop whatever's on your desk And listen close Come on, you know it's Someone cares A power trip and an unknown kid A flash of something steel The ground is cold and so is a gun That makes it worth the thrill Countless more on the bottom floor, but only a few remembered. It's been too long, it's not enough. It's the reason why we're standing hand in hand in solidarity. We've had enough for the pure brutality. Make no more excuses, cause you know it's wrong. Come on, you know it's true. Someone can
in the hands of something small yet dangerous. Baby, we're not scared. It's not just me, it's everyone but you. Well, it's all man now we're fine. Till someone Today I want to share with you one last nugget before we part ways and you walk off on your own path and journey. In eighth grade, I came across a little book titled, Be Here Now. Not sure what drew me to that book, maybe the cover. It's pretty cool if you ever check it out. But the message also stuck with me to this day. The author of this book was actually a professor at Harvard. He ended up leaving or being kicked out of the university and traveling the world seeking his own truths. The book, published back in 1971, has many messages about yoga, the inner journey. But one of those that really stuck with me was the power of meditation. This was my first introduction to the practice and it really made an impression. Here was a practice that could help transform one's life just by simply being in the present moment. Well, as many of you know, that message has resonated with me and I've spent a big part of my own life trying to not just understand it, but also embody it. During this quarantine period, like many of you, I found myself going back to these practices and arts. Well, actually, Maybe many of you weren't meditating, but I did share the passion for Netflix shows that probably you had as well. But I also started listening to a lot of podcasts. Some of them were silly and touched on sports or the latest news, articles, and events, but a few delved into topics concerning mindfulness, meditation, and healing. And it was in one of those podcasts I came across this old story that I'd like to share with you today it goes like this. Once upon a time, there was an old farmer who had worked his crops for many years. And one day, while he was out in the fields, his horse ran away. Upon hearing the news, his neighbors came over to visit, and they said, such bad luck. You should have kept it tied up by the barn. The farmer responded really simply, we'll see. The next morning, to everyone's surprise, the horse returned, but this time bringing with it three other wild horses. The neighbors return again, and this time they exclaim, how wonderful, you're so lucky. We'll see, replied the old farmer. The next week, his son tried to ride one of those untamed horses and was thrown and broke his leg badly. The doctor came and said it never worked right quite again. The boy would always have a limp and need a cane. The neighbors again came over to offer their sympathy, but also shake their heads in judgment at his misfortune. They said he should have never let that boy ride that horse. We told him it was a bad idea. We'll see, answered the farmer one more time. Several years later, a great war broke out and a military official came to the village to draft all the young men into the army. Seeing that the farmer's son's leg was broken, he passed him by. The neighbors ran to the farmer once again, this time to let him know how lucky he was. We'll see, he replied one last time. There's a simple but prophetic message in this story. 
do your best. But you've got to learn to let go. Let go of the outcomes. Let go of all the goal setting, the judgments, the obsessions, and most of all, let go of your old expectations. No one really knows how things are gonna turn out. I guess this is easier said than done, for sure, but honestly, nothing could be truer in the world you now enter. The moments I found in life, the birth of my two children, even the heat of a classroom discussion, the moment when I you break above the tree line while hiking a mountain, those are the moments I'm most present and I felt most alive. And those are the moments I hear that simple message in my head, be here now. The man who told that story on the podcast was the same individual who wrote that book I picked up in eighth grade. His name was Ram Das. Now Ram Das died this past December at his home in Maui. And at the end of his own life, he suffered a severe stroke and found himself confined to a wheelchair. From this wheelchair, he continued to espouse a simple but radical message of love. He talked about the idea of becoming nobody, letting go of all the external ways in which we construct our identities, the selfies, the Instagram feeds, the TikTok videos, and just simply drop into one's own heart. The world has changed. It's always been changing. And as you go forward on your own path, remember to be present with your own knowing and your own wisdom and your own love. Be an advocate for change, for the dignity of all, and remember that all paths lead back to the heart, the center of the heart. Thank you, class of 2020, and congratulations. I'm gonna miss all of you. And a special shout out to my own daughter tonight, who turns one. All of you, including her, <laughs> bring me so much joy, and it brought me so much uh, laughter and happiness. Really, thank you. Congratulations. Oh
I chose to investigate how opportunity can be represented in a landscape. And I originally got this idea when I was fortunate enough to visit Cambodia um, last year. And while I was there, I spoke with many interesting people like genocide survivors, war survivors, and English teachers. And one thing I learned from them is that many people aspire to live in a city, but you have to know English and you have to have an education. So it's really representative of success and opportunity. So I was able to take many pictures, which I felt captured the excitement of the cities through natural and artificial light. And I decided to continue to explore this idea of opportunity in a landscape, not just in Cambodia, but also globally and in the US. Um, so in another piece that I did, I explore opportunity in a train station tunnel, contrasting light as someone's op aspirations with the routine of arriving at the end of the tunnel. Um, I briefly experimented with lack of opportunity for ex-prisoners, finding a job and just generally reacclimating to society. And I also experimented with peeling acrylic paint to represent gaps in the US's social safety net. So this is supposed to be an urban landscape um, put together with patches of cracked paint. Um, then I moved in a very different direction by exploring the environmental impact of cities 
First, I painted landscapes in Singapore, which was very interesting to me because it's a city that relies on overseas shipping for most of its resources, yet it's the most eco-friendly city in Asia. So I wanted to show that climate-friendly policies are not at odds with opportunity by showing the greenery in the city and their like landmarks, which represent the green effort. Um, next, I wanted to investigate the impact of pollution on landmarks in India, which are at the heart of opportunity. And finally, I explore how the coronavirus has affected small businesses by drawing an empty restaurant. Um, all in all, I tried to pull from what I was learning in my classes and also outside of class to understand what opportunity means and how it can vary from person to person and country to country. What a phenomenal celebration of our seniors and their talents in the fine and performing arts. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Luter, Ms. Simpson, Ms. Karkala, Ms. Allen, Mr. Ashley, and Mr. Parker for all of their help to make this event possible in its new format. I would also like to thank the parents who partnered with us to help organize the event. Aaron Saluti, Mary Frankel, and Mary Alice O'Connell. 
I want to congratulate the class of 2020 and all of those seniors, seniors who participated this evening and shared their talents with us. It was just a glimpse of the work and dedication you have put into developing and honing your skills over these years at the Bronxville School. As the principal, I normally do not speak at baccalaureate. In fact, the last time I spoke at baccalaureate was in 2009 when I was a science teacher at Bronxville High School and the faculty speaker nominated by the senior class to address them. The ceremony was at Concordia and was beautiful. At that time, I shared with the seniors and the audience a story from my brother's college graduation. The commencement speaker was Mr. Rogers. It was the best commencement address I've ever heard. During my baccalaureate address, I spoke about a story Mr. Rogers told. Today, I wanna to share what he said at the beginning of his speech, which is apropos to our current situation and also this event. Mr. Rogers said, our world hangs like a magnificent jewel in the vastness of space. Every one of us is a part of that jewel, a facet of that jewel. And in the perspective of infinity, our differences are infinitesimal. We are intimately related. May we never pretend that we are not. Today, class of 2020, we celebrate each of you and the unique individuals that you are, and we hope that you continue to pursue the arts throughout your lives and offer your talents and perspectives to others. Congratulations.